So it's end of July and that can mean only one thing. UCAT season is now upon us. If you're preparing for the UCAT, fear not, you've come to the right place and I have a whole bunch of advice to give you guys. Welcome back to the channel. If you guys are new here, my name is Maria and I'm a third year medical student studying at the University of Cambridge. So I'm starting a series of videos on how to prepare for the UCAT and this is the rough plan of what I'm going to be doing, but this first video is going to be an introduction, my experience and general tips for how to prepare for the UCAT. Um, the next video is going to be specifically targeting the individual sections of the UCAT, giving specific strategies on how to approach these. My third one is just going to be pointing out the main pitfalls to avoid when preparing for the UCAT, because trust me, I definitely fell for some of these. And then the last one is how to strategically use your UCAT score to maximize your chances of getting into medical school. Because the thing is with the UCAT is it's used holistically as part of the rest of your application. So even a lower score can still help you get into a medical school. You just need to make sure you really know how that individual medical school will be using your UCAT. Okay, so without any further ado, let's launch straight into the first video. So I have the timestamps for the video in the description, but you can also see them on the screen. So the first thing I want to talk about is what even is the UCAT and why you might need to be sitting it. After that, I want to delve into what constitutes a good score in the UCAT and what you should be aiming for to be able to maximise your chances of succeeding. Um, and then after that, I want to talk about my own experiences, how I found it, and then how I prepared. So talking about the actual resources that are used um, and whether I actually recommend these resources because some of them I really don't. And lastly, I want to be giving my general tips for preparing for the UCAT, which are applicable to all of the sections. Okay, so let's get straight into it. So first of all, what even is the UCAT? So the UCAT is the University Clinical Aptitude Test. And I really want to point this out because it's an aptitude test rather than one which focuses and tests knowledge. That means that it's not something you can really prepare for overnight. But, and also there isn't a direct correlation between the time you spend on it and the score you're going to get. And this is really important and I'll discuss later when I'm focusing on how much time you should leave to prepare for it. So the UCAT is one of the major obstacles you have when applying for most of the UK medicine and dentistry schools. It's also used by a couple of schools abroad as well, so you'll need to check if the ones you're considering applying to use it. I really don't recommend doing the UCAT for fun, so make sure you actually need to be doing it. Okay, so how does the UCAT actually work? So the UCAT is one of the most time pressured exams I have ever sat. And I would probably say it was one of my least favorite ones as well. And since I've sat quite a few exams over the years, I would say that's a bad sign. Um, so the way it works is there are five sections. The first four give you a numerical score between 300 and 900, with 600 being average. There is also a final section uh, called the situational judgment section. In the situational judgment test, you will get a score that comes in bands, band one to band four, where band one is the highest. I'm just going to run through the different sections that you have and the timing for these, because this is the tightest thing. And this is, I think, the biggest obstacle in the UCAT. I think given enough time, most applicants would be able to score extremely highly on the UCAT. The problem is the timing and that's the thing you really need to be focusing on from the very start. Okay, so the UCAT has five subtests. The first one that you'll encounter is the verbal reasoning. So that has 44 questions and you do this in 21 minutes. This involves passages of text and it's essentially reading comprehension that you have to do on this. It's really tricky because of this timing and you're going to need to develop strategies in order to target this. The next section is decision-making. This is composed of a whole bunch of logic puzzles and you need to be able to answer these to the best of your abilities. There's a whole diversity of different types of questions that come up, so you need to prepare for all of them. 
There are 29 questions in 31 minutes, so it's slightly more relaxed time-wise. The next section is the quantitative reasoning. So this one is questions which take on a numerical form. So you'll have math sums to be doing and you need to be picking out the correct answer. The thing with this though is often it'll take multiple little calculations to do and it's very time pressured. You have 36 questions in 25 minutes, which equates to around 40 seconds per question. Also, there is an online calculator you can use, but this is slow. So if you do decide to use it, you need to make sure you make the most of the calculator shortcuts. And I'm gonna get onto that in the second video. Um, the last uh, section here is the abstract reasoning. And this one is the tightest for time. You have 12 minutes to answer 50 questions. This takes the form of no, like a non-verbal reasoning test. So they'll give you a whole range of different um, shapes and boxes and you'll need to be able to figure out what the patterns are or the different rules connecting sets and be able to get uh, to tell what the right answer is. Like I said, I'll go into more detail on the sections, but that's kind of what to expect. Then in the situational judgment test, you actually have moral or ethical dilemmas generally related to hospital practice and from there you need to decide if actions are appropriate or if things are important. So there'll be like four options uh, and an action will either be most appropriate, uh, appropriate but not ideal, inappropriate but not awful or just completely inappropriate and you have to decide what the answer is from there. That one has 66 questions in 26 minutes. So how did I do in the UCAT? Um, I found the UCAT really stressful when I went on the day. If you guys don't know, it's actually generally conducted in these driving theory test centers um, and it's done online, which really, really threw me off. Um, so you'll be sitting in a room surrounded by people doing their driving theory and you will just be whizzing away with your questions. So I got uh, an overall score of 690 as my average between the four sections, which was a good score, but it wasn't seen as like incredible. Um, but it was enough for me to get offers from all the UCAT universities that I applied to, which was my aim. Um, so that comes out as around 2760 um, as an overall score. In the situational judgment test, I got a band one. Okay. So moving on, um, what are the main resources that I used when I was doing the UCAT? So I used this book. This is something that is recommended to everyone, I guess. Everybody seems to use it. However, I do not recommend this book. A lot of the questions are very difficult, especially for the quantitative reasoning and they're much harder than the sorts of questions you'll get in the exam. I actually don't think that's good preparation though because you need to be able to get comfortable with doing the questions under the timed conditions. If they're so much harder, you're not going to be doing the timing properly and I think you'd be quite disadvantaged in the exam. The other thing with the book is it's difficult to be strict with yourself in terms of timing and you don't get a feel for the online interface. What I recommend doing instead is actually going to um, the UCAT website and seeing their own practice papers and doing those first. Those ones are free and that should be your first port of call. From there, I really recommend getting Medify. If you guys don't know what Medify is, it's this um, website and subscription service uh, which gives you UCAT questions and allows you to prepare for them that tracks your progress and it highlights your weaknesses. You do lots of practice questions from their banks and mock papers, so you can actually gauge how you're doing. That is the best resource because it has this online interface and is properly timed. It really closely mimics the exam format and I think that's really important with the UCAT. From there, I also think that YouTube has so many good resources that give you strategies for how to be targeting the UCAT. Um, there are so many good YouTubers out there who will literally walk you through individual questions. Um, I've collated a few of those in the description, but be sure to check those out because YouTube is free 
and there is so much on there that will be really helpful. Mm. Something that I didn't use but I've heard is a really good resource is the Kaplan strategy book that actually talks you through different strategies you can use um, for each of the different sorts of questions and I kind of wish I had been a bit more strategic when I was doing the UCAT. If you're stuck on particular questions, it's also good to make use of online forums like the student room or just asking your friends who might also be doing the UCAT. That way you can make sure that if there's something you're consistently getting wrong, um, you actually address it so you learn from those mistakes and can be way more prepared in the actual exam. With the main resources out of the way, what are my top general tips for preparing for the UCAT? I'm not sure if I've hammered this home enough, but the UCAT is an incredibly time pressured exam. You have mere seconds for some of the questions. So I think from the very start, get into the habit of doing the questions timed. This is not what I did. I spent time doing it just straight from the book, you know, in a more relaxed environment. This doesn't get you the skills that you need for the exam. The whole point is you're doing these in really, really tight time conditions. So if you're not practicing time, make sure you start doing that immediately. Next thing is start actually using an online interface as soon as possible. You want it to be mimicking the exam you want to have a good idea of how to use an online calculator and figuring out whether you're going to be using that in the quantitative reasoning section. The next thing is all of the questions in the UCAT are worth the same amount. However, some of them will be harder than others. The whole point is you need to be maximizing the number of marks you can get in this very short time frame. What you need to do is on seeing the question, you need to gauge how difficult it is. If it's very difficult and you're struggling, guess, flag, move on. You may have time at the end to go back to it, but you might not. That way though, you still have a reasonable answer down and you can dedicate more time to questions where you're sure you can get the marks. Next point is about when to book the UCAT. So I did the UCAT in the middle of September right towards the end of the examination window. This is because I was abroad and I was kind of still figuring things out to the very last minute. I really recommend against doing it so late. Um, this is because it starts to really interfere with everything else you're doing for uni admissions at that point. So I was really struggling to actually start writing my personal statement because I still had the UCAT in the way. I had lots of other things for uni admissions as well. So it made the experience a lot more stressful. So definitely do it in the summer holidays if you can. It can also cut out time that you could be using to start preparing for the BMAT if you want to apply for BMAT entry universities. Um, what I have heard from other YouTubers and makes a lot of sense actually, um, and it was something that came up when I was doing the 11 plus, is that you don't want to have too much time when you're applying. The thing is, the UCAT is an aptitude test. That means that you gain skills and revising on on, on and on doesn't necessarily mean you're actually going to end up with a better score. Hear me out. So initially you start off and you will be pretty terrible. Um, and then as you practice and you get to grips with the sorts of questions and what they're looking for, you'll get better and better and better. But there'll be a point where you start to plateau because as you do more questions, you won't be getting a better score and that's completely normal. The thing is though, if you leave it too long after this, your score will actually begin to suffer and begin to decline. Now, this is because as you're practicing on and on every single day, you're gonna get more and more tired and you will risk burnout. So, the whole point is you need to do it during the sweet spot where you are at your peak performance. So I recommend leaving three to four weeks for the UCAT, doing it maybe mid-August and then having some time off before the start of the year, at least a week. That will allow you to be a bit more refreshed as you go into year 13. Year 13 is a busy year, so you need as much break as you can before you start. My next top tip is please do not neglect the SJT. The SJT is an important component of the exam, 
and it's a standalone one, whereas the other ones can kind of make up for each other and average out. The situation of judgment is very much its own little section, which universities will consider separately. It gives universities a rough idea of how your what your views are in these ethical situations and it can kind of give an idea of how suitable you are for medicine and being in a clinical setting. So this is how people do on average, so um, only around 16% of people will get a band 1 score but overall between band 1 and band 2 50% will be up there. The thing is you really want to avoid getting a band 3 or band 4 because some medical schools will outright reject you because of that and that's really important to consider because nobody cares if you have an average of 850 if you have a band 4. Uh, that's really going to ruin your chances of getting into medical school so you have to focus on that SJT. It's a really critical component of the exam. Last thing I want to say is focus on your weaknesses. So for me, I actually really struggled with um, verbal reasoning. So if you're in that situation like me, really focus on that, really do it under time practice and continuously work on it because you want to be bringing everything up together and that's how you can do it. If there are types of questions you really struggle with, make sure you understand them and you actually understand what you're getting wrong because otherwise it's just going to be a continuous pattern where you continue to get that type of question wrong so address things early on and make sure you understand your weaknesses and you target them including specific question types okay i think that's it from me for this first video if you have any questions or suggestions please feel free to ask me in the comments below i'd be really happy to get back to you Okay, hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it useful, um, please like and subscribe.